Lee Chatelier's principle. This principle was given by Lee Chatelier's and Brown in 1884. According to this principle, if a system under equilibrium is subjected to a change, if we change the concentration of reactant or product, or if we change the temperature, if we change the pressure, or if we add some inert gas, then equilibrium shifts itself in such a way as to undo or neutralize the effect of the change. The change should be neutralized. For example, if we talk about concentration, let us discuss first effect of concentration. Reactant to product. Now, let us take this reaction is in equilibrium. Kc equal to product over reactant and that is equal to Qc because reaction is at equilibrium. Now, if we add reactant, as we add the reactant, additional reactant is added, equilibrium is disturbed. What it means? Now, reactant is increased. So, Qc is less than Kc. Qc becomes less than Kc. We have discussed reaction quotient. If reactant is added, equilibrium tries to undo the effect. So, reactant should decrease. So, when Qc is less than Kc, that means forward rate is greater than backward rate. At equilibrium, forward rate is equal to backward rate. But now, forward reaction is greater than backward reaction. That means now forward reaction is faster than the backward. So, forward reaction is favored. So, if we add product. Now, we add product in the already established equilibrium. When we add the product, what will happen? Product increases, that means Qc becomes greater than Kc. And as product increases, so backward rate is faster than forward reaction. That means backward reaction is favored by the reaction. That means if we increase the reactant, forward reaction is favored. If we increase the product, backward reaction is favored. And at the same time, if we add reactant or remove product, in both the cases, QC becomes less than KC. And forward reaction is greater than backward reaction. Same, if we increase the product or decrease the reactant, then Qc become greater than Kc. So, if product is added or reactant is removed, in both the cases, Qc is greater than Kc and backward reaction is favored. So, this is about the effect of concentration. Second is effect of pressure. If we deal with only solids and liquids, then there is no effect of pressure. If a reaction involves only pure solids or pure liquids, then there is no effect of pressure. But if a reaction has gaseous moles, then there is a significant effect of pressure. 
let us discuss three cases so let us study the effect of pressure on these three reactions first what is the basic of the pressure effect if we increase the pressure then that side of the reaction is favored where pressure decreases and you know pressure is proportional to number of gaseous moles and inversely proportional to volume so increasing pressure favor that side of the reaction where gaseous moles where number of gaseous moles are less that means the side where volume of gaseous moles decreases if we decrease the pressure reaction favor that side where gaseous moles are more now come to this in this case you know delta mg is zero because number of moles of product is equal to 2 and number of moles of reactant is also equal to 2 and you know delta mg is equal to gaseous moles of product minus gaseous moles of reactant and that should be equal to 0 that means no effect of pressure such reaction is not affected by change in pressure come to the second on product side number of gaseous moles are 2 on reactant side number of gaseous moles are 3 plus 1 4 so delta mg is equal to product minus reactant minus 2 that means decrease in gaseous moles so decrease in gaseous moles favored by increase in pressure so increase in pressure favors this reaction means if delta ng is negative is less than zero such reaction is favored by increase in pressure third one number of gaseous moles of product is equal to 2 number of gaseous moles of reactant is equal to 1 in this case delta ng is equal to 2 minus 1 means 1 means number of gaseous moles increases so such reaction is favored by decrease in pressure decrease in pressure favors that side of the reaction where gaseous moles are more and increase in pressure favor that side of the reaction where gaseous moles are less in first case gaseous moles are same on both sides that's why there is no effect of pressure and if a, there is a reaction which involves only solids and liquids no effect of pressure no of temperature when we increase the temperature temperature is increased because heat content increases as heat content increases equilibrium shifts to that side which absorb the heat means which type of reaction takes place which absorb the heat and heat absorption takes place in endothermic reaction that means endothermic reactions are favored and if we decrease the temperature means we decrease the heat content so reaction or equilibrium is established by favoring the reaction which increases the heat content means which release the heat so heat is released by exothermic reactions 
So exothermic reactions are favored on decreasing temperature and endothermic reactions are favored by increasing temperature. In the reaction where delta H is positive are favored by increase in temperature and reaction where delta H is negative are favored by decrease in temperature. And if we have a reaction which has delta H equal to zero, neither heat absorbed nor evolved. In such a reaction, there is no effect of temperature. So temperature effect is observed in those reactions which involves absorption of heat or evolution of heat. Heat is either absorbed or evolved. Only then temperature affects the reaction. An increase in temperature favors endothermic reactions. Decrease in temperature favors exothermic reactions. And if there is no absorption or evolution of heat, means for the reaction where delta H is zero, there is no effect. Fourth is effect of addition of inert gas. First, at constant volume. At constant volume, when we add inert gas at constant volume, you know, number of moles of reactant and product remain same. Volume is again constant. This is inert gas, no contribution to reactant or product. So number of moles of reactant per unit volume, number of moles of product per unit volume remains same. That means concentration of product, concentration of reactant remains same. So QC remains equal to KC. That's why no effect of adding inert gas at constant volume. Now, at constant pressure, if we add inert gas at constant pressure, remember this is very important, when we add inert gas, you know gaseous content increases, there is no effect on number of moles of reactant or product, but gaseous content increases and you know pressure is proportional to number of moles initially pressure increases but we have to keep it constant to keep it constant to keep pressure constant we have to increase volume. If we increase the volume, then number of moles of reactant per unit volume, number of moles of product per unit volume decreases. That means concentration decreases. As concentration decreases, so reaction favor that side of the reaction where gaseous moles are more. Where gaseous moles are more. So keep in mind at constant volume there is no effect of adding inert gas and at constant pressure when we add inert gas reaction favor that side where gaseous moles are more. If we add inert gas, in first case, if we add inert gas at constant pressure, equilibrium shifts towards that side where gaseous moles are more. Means it moves to the right on adding inert gas at constant pressure. That means decomposition of PCL5 increases. 
what about second reaction? If we add inert gas at constant pressure, equilibrium shifts to the left, backward, that means formation of SO3 decreases on adding inert gas at constant pressure. In third case, uh, there is no change in gaseous moles on both sides. Gaseous moles are equal, so there is no effect of adding inert gas even at constant pressure. Effect of catalyst. We have already discussed effect of catalyst in a reversible reaction. Catalyst increases the rate of forward reaction as well as backward reaction. It increases the rate of forward reaction as well as backward reaction and therefore it fastens the rate of attainment of equilibrium but it cannot affect concentration of reactant or product. So it has no effect on equilibrium. Catalyst has no effect on equilibrium. It only decreases the time of attainment of equilibrium. Means rate of attainment of equilibrium becomes fast. Only lessens the, it decreases the time taken to reach the equilibrium. That's all about this principle. It was given by Leach Helliers and Brown in 1884. Thank you very much for watching this video. Do like, subscribe and share my channel. God bless you all.